Uh, controversial opinion. Oh, you know us for talking about Asian food, but in this video, we're about to rank European cuisine from best to worst. So you let me know what you think about our list down below. Yeah, I think that this list is a few years in the making. A lot of people have always asked our opinions because they know that we've been to like a thousand Asian restaurants or more, right? But people are like, hey, fun bros, I need to know what's your guys' opinion on European cuisines. Mm. Because shockingly enough, Andrew, we do live in the Western world and there are a lot more people of European descent in America than Asian descent. <laughs> Shocking fact, I know. Basically, you know, we have seeked out European restaurants in America. Obviously, we have not spent a lot of time in Europe, so I'm not gonna say we're experts. We are not experts. We might get some stuff wrong. We might leave some dishes out. We might pronounce words wrong, but I'm just saying, this is our own well thought out list in our opinion. Yeah, let's get into number one, Andrew. I gotta build it up. Coming in at our favorite European cuisine that we've had in America, guys. So we may have left out some of the smaller countries. We didn't go to Moldova, never been to a Luxembourg restaurant. Andrew, is Italian food. Italiano. But we're not just talking about, you know, Italian, American, you know, little Italy. We're talking about actually food from Italy. And there's a lot of restaurants all over America uh, that are ported over or like, you know, you got Italian chefs that are bringing over concepts. So literally Italian food in America, if you seek it out, can get pretty good. I want to say that hyper-authentic Italian Italian food is more the past 20, 10 years in America. You know, prior to that, it was little Italian, uh, little Italy, Sicilian, Americanized food. But actually, Andrew, whether you're talking about Olive Garden, Emilio Bellato's, or something from Sardinia or Tuscany directly ported over, all three levels, Andrew, are good. And I think that that's how you know Italian food is good because even Americanized Italian, and some people are going to kill me for this, like, I like the pastas at like yeah. Olive Garden no, and good. cheesecake and stuff. It's fire. Those are fire. And I think actually in general, Asians like Italian food for a number of reasons. And one of the reasons is that Italian food has a lot of similar elements to Asian food. We know this. But why is that? <laughs> No, I'm just well, kidding. there's a theory, you know, it's debatable, whatever, that obviously Marco Polo brought noodles over to make a pasta in Italy. But anyways, regardless, guys, listen, there's Calabrian chili oil. I love that. That looks like the Chinese chili oil. Pizzas look like Chung Yobing, whatever. I agree with you, though, that of the European cuisines, Andrew, Italian food visually and probably taste palette-wise is the almost one of the most similar to Asian food, unless you're taking, like, Georgian an example. Let's get into some dishes that people need to try from Italian food that are, are a little bit off the, the top 10. Okay, so a lot of uh, Italian foodie heads order this, but uh, a lot of people who like are just on the Americanized wave, they do not, risotto. Okay. Risotto, really, really good. All right, I'm gonna pick uh, handkerchief egg pasta. This is super wide. I had it only like twice in my life and it was the best pesto I've ever had. They're super wide noodles. They look like ribbons. They're super silky. Right, so you're picking the one that reminds you the most of possibly Tao Shao Mian. And I put nah, a, there's a no Joe, I picked a kanji. But no, um, I would say also Tremezzi's from Venice. Those okay. are the finger sandwiches with no crust. Really, really good. Uh, I love Calabrian chili oil. I'm not saying that just because it kind of reminds me of the Chinese chili oil. Literally, though, it's a really good chili oil. It uses more fresh chilies and olive oil versus frying all the dried chilies. Um, I would say overrated wise, and I'm not saying that these are bad by any means, but maybe Arrancini balls. Okay. I'm not, I, I can agree with you on that. I would probably never really go to order those. And I don't, this is going to be controversial. I'm not a big fan of gnocchi. I'm okay. just not. It's too but, chewy. But, but to be fair, you don't like tapoki either. So this is a, a texture thing yeah, for you. Yeah, I don't like the super thick, ricey, carby balls. Yeah. And as far <laughs> as dishes we didn't try, there are a ton of like hyper-regional dishes because a lot of people don't know this about Italy, and I didn't even know this till recently. For such a small country, Andrew, the food varies greatly and they do not necessarily eat each other's foods yeah like, it's they're very, very provincial it's very regional considering how small italy is as a country moving on to number two andrew number two we got a sleeper pick a lot of people are not going to expect us to say this i've got everything along the iberian <laughs> peninsula aka portuguese in spain oh i'm yo controversial opinion i think portugal's pulling the weight in my opinion Ooh, i like portuguese that, food that a is lot. a controversial opinion because most Americans would say Spain is. Yeah, I get it. Spanish tapas, delicious. And, and I think this does belong in number two. There's a lot of spices. Obviously, Spanish cuisine has influenced all of Latin America, Central America, things like that. Um, Portuguese food, though. Oh, my gosh. Like, Portuguese food might be the most dude, slept on one. It's like I'm Portuguese were some of the first world explorer guys. Come on. They, I would they just say what is underrated is the entire Portuguese cuisine. <laughs> Garlic prawns, the yeah. gambas. 
Uh-huh. Anything just seafood related. And yeah. like you said, what, Andrew, peri-peri oil? God, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the oils, peri-peri oil. I had that in our Portuguese video when we went to Jersey with Joey Bats. It, it originally, was, originally from Mozambique, by the way, because yes. from the age of exploration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. peri-peri is a chili that's from Africa. We, we get that. But Portuguese made it the kind of like... I guess, global thing. Overrated things, uh, croquettes. It mm-hmm. kind of goes back to the arancini. I'm just not a fan of whatever this is. You I mean, don't know. Fried rice balls yeah. that where rice is like, all right, here's, I'm coming with the controversial opinions, bro. You know, I'm controversial. People might tear me apart for this. I think a dish that is a little overrated, and I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's overrated, is paella. Oh, <laughs> I just I think, think I think I do think the visual presentation it, around the gigantic no, no. Pa- pan it, plays into the it. The elements are great, but somewhere I've had expensive paella. I've paid fifty dollars for paella in my life, so I spent the money, and I was just a little disappointed. The flavor's not like crazy and anything like that. It, it, it looks. I'll will give you this. I think it looks better than it tastes. Okay. honestly, and uh, is not I, think, bad. I think the large portion that they make it in makes the QC a little difficult as well. Uh, David, so, what what's something that we're looking to try from the Iberian Peninsula? Uh, okay. The meat stews. Okay, I think a lot of those ones they don't really make it to the American versions of the restaurants. Like we said, guys. Um, you might be watching this and you might be frustrated or infuriated. We're just talking about the dishes from Portugal and Spain that are available in America. And what, what percentage of those entire cuisines make it over, right? Especially depending on the city you're in. What is it, 50% maybe? Mm. All right, moving on to the third best European cuisine. I think some people were like, yo, why didn't you say this earlier? Why wasn't this number two? This should be number two. But this is just our opinion, guys. Remember, we might be wrong. And also, opinions are just opinions. Yeah, like literally different people like different things. David, what's number three? French. Francois. Wow. French should, I think French could easily be number two. Um, But obviously French food, in my opinion, um, from the restaurants that I've been to in my life, that the French technique and French influence is one of the greatest across the world as far as like, oh, we're doing this with French techniques. Yeah, it's probably the the most influential cuisine Maybe. Almost maybe in the world. Yeah, but however, the dishes I, themselves, I feel like that's why it's number three. It's good, but it's not like I haven't been blown away, you know? Yeah, I think French is really heavy in the fine dining, in the high-end sector. Mm-hmm. But if you want to get to like really low-end foods, obviously you have your pastries and your cafes and things like that. But maybe I, I've just seen a lot of like rotisserie chicken spots because rotisserie is a French word, especially in the West Village. Uh-huh. Now, if we were just ranking it on bakeries... I think French would be number one, of course, because I think the French bakery game is is top notch. But David, what are some underrated dishes from France that people got to try? All right. In America, I I don't think in Europe these are underrated because I think they're quite popular. The croque madame and the croque monsieur, Mm. like people only eat them at like fancy, you know, hotty totty, like French bakeries. But it's actually like good for anybody. Like I think Billy Bob the trucker could enjoy it if he could get over the fact that, you know, it's called a croque madame or a croque monsieur. Right. Um, as far as overrated dishes, now these are dishes that we're like, ah, you could probably skip on. Oh, one, one thing more, uh, anything stewed in a pot. I think those are difficult to find in America oh. because it's easy to find duck confit in America. But the, the pot au feu, which oh. some people say that pho came from or right. was influenced by, um, that those are difficult to find. You got to go to like really deep cut French spots. Mm-hmm. I do, again, remind you, French techniques. Some of the best cooking techniques in the world. I would say overrated, Andrew. Quiches. <laughs> you don't like quiches. I don't like quiches. I don't, never like, like, I don't like Americanized quiches. I don't like the French uh, French quiches. Okay. okay, I got one that I don't think is as controversial, but I'll tell you this. This is super overrated, especially in America, because it is illegal to import live versions of this food. Is escargot. It's not good. Uh, you're saying it's because your taste buds is not as uh, sophisticated <laughs> enough to... Um... Right, now we started doing the accents for the French people. <laughs> no offense to French people, but uh, let me tell you this. Escargot, you, you think I'm wrong for saying that eating snails is overrated? Eating snails. But yeah, you probably eat snails, uh, Chinese snails all the time. Guys, they're, stir fry the they're, walk. They're, <laughs> they're not even fresh snails. What they have to do is they have to import one and then they stick it back into the shell. It's not the original shell. Oh, these snails. that's why I always disconnect. It's not good yeah. in the, in the Mecca, oh, you know? Also, I don't really like the Niçois salad. Okay, uh, one dish that you got to try, David, I don't, you you haven't had it. I've had it, is beef bourguignon. I didn't say that right. No, you said it super beef wrong. Beef bourguignon. Sure. Yeah. Bo- beef, beef bourguignon. Yo, I'm surprised I haven't had it. Yo. But like I said, the stews 
are kind of hard to find. Oh, another thing I guess that's probably could I, I'm just saying it's not as good as famous it is, Ratatouille. Oh, yeah, kind of blown it's up. It's more because of the Disney movie, right? Anyway, moving on, Andrew. Still French food, obviously really good, guys. I know some people are going to come in the comments. And be like, oh, suck a little bit. Yeah. I'm be number uh, three. <laughs> number four, Andrew. Greek. Greek food is good. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, I would say Greek food is pretty popular in America because there's a lot of Greek immigrants, yeah. obviously, depending on, like, what part of the country you're in. Right, and, and I think when we say Greek, guys, uh, we're just going to have to say, like, in general, Mediterranean food. But it's, like, really Greek because Mediterranean is kind of Middle Eastern, too. So it kind of shares the oceans. We get it, yes. But Greek food, obviously, very, very popular. Um, obviously, the kebabs, the grilled meats, the shawarma, the wraps, the the, uh, the euros. hummus is obviously delicious, guys. This is very popular. I eat hummus, like, all the time. I, I get it from Trader Joe's. I, I will really say like that so, I, I love Greek food, and I think Greek has some of the best street food in America. But sometimes it can't be, for me, a little sour. Okay, but what specifically, David, what's overrated well, about it? Well, first of all, look, we got to talk about what's underrated. Greek grilled octopus. And I know, like we said, European food heads or uh, Greek foodies, of course, they're always going to get the grilled octopus tentacle, right? But a lot of Americans, they're almost stopping at the Euros with I the fries in it. I think Greeks do the best grilled octopus. That is my preferred way to eat octopus, David. Chinese have octopus dishes. I don't really like them that much. I think the Greek one is delicious. I say go for it whenever you have the chance. Um, Things that I think maybe, for me, I'm not a huge fan of the Greek salad, which is funny because that's one of the most popular salads available, like, for lunch in America. I, but I just, it's like, I like, I, like, one out of every five that I have. I'm going to agree with you because I think the Greek salad is the most overserved salad <laughs> In America, maybe. I don't like feta blocks, like the feta cubes. I'm not saying feta cheese is whack overall. I like them when it's in the pastry and you have the spinach. Yeah, it's got and a all lot of different Yeah, yeah I, I like that. But, man, when it's just in the cold blocks, it's just too much. It's too much. But um, overall, guys, Greek food is delicious. Baklava, all the desserts. And I think I mean, really accessible, too. Like, yeah. it's, how else are you going to get Americans to eat lamb? You put tzatziki yeah. on it. Um, one thing we didn't try yet, other than Greek baklava, we have not had a lot of Greek desserts. Mm-hmm. I haven't. I know that I like looked up this list. It's it, there's a ton, but it's just only available over there. One thing that's underrated that a lot of people don't think about is that garlic spread. That med. I don't. I don't know if it's from Greece or like the general Mediterranean oh. area, but it's the one that you get in your shawarma. Yeah, because you get that, a lot of you. You can get. Uh, you know, different sauces that yeah. all kind of visually, if you're an outsider to that culture, look the yeah. same because hummus looks the same as the garlic sauce. Tzatziki yeah. looks similar, right? It's all kind of like a light colored paste, but the garlic sauce, yeah. Number five, Andrew. Whoa. Georgian, but I had to, just be, for the sake of time, I had to include Hungarian as well as there. Because it's uh, somewhat similar. Yeah, they're somewhat similar. I'm not saying they are similar. I know that they're separate, but honestly, Georgian and Hungarian food are super delicious because they got some of the influence, you know, maybe possibly from the Huns, ah. from the Mongolians, man. I, dude, really good. Okay, come on. Kachapoi's, Kinkali's, those are delicious. Um, obviously, we, we did a whole Georgian food video. So I'll say this. it's it, I don't know if this is a bias pick because we actually went to the Georgian neighborhood and we ate at a bunch of delicious Georgian restaurants. But even so, the ones in, 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 in Manhattan are good too, yeah, in the Main Street That's zone. true, that's true. Georgian food is good. Honestly. And Hungarian food is good too, Andrew. Mm. Chicken paprikash to me is like a top 10 dish in Europe. I think what you're referring to, because we haven't been to a lot of like technically like purely Hungarian restaurants, but any dish that says Hungarian that is credited to Hungary is good. Dude, these are probably one of the most slept on. Like along with Portuguese, people be sleeping okay. on Georgia. I think Georgia got trendy recently. People be sleeping on Hungarian. All right, what's the say, underrated uh, dish of Georgia? Of Georgia? And honestly, Hungary, I don't know. I didn't get to try that much from Hungary, but the ones I tried, I like almost everything. What do you mean everything's underrated? Everything's underrated. How can it all be underrated? Don't like, they don't know anything. I would say the King Kali's are really, really, really good. Obviously, an Asian, you know, possibly Asian no. influence dish. Yo, t- t- there's some, there's some uh, kachapuri spots out in New York that have different types of kachipori. Oh, like the fusion ones? Yeah, the different boats, different Dude, cheese boats. Dude, the different the cheese, cheese boats. boats. And you got to get the, the kachipori that has the look. Yeah. Um, The overrated, maybe, I don't know. Some of the juices is, like, not my favorite. You not tell you more. <laughs> overrated. That's that's a funny thing to overrate. I think, and, and I don't know, don't hate me for it, you know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is, whoa. I know it's one of the most famous desserts, 
and I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying I, I don't really like it, is the church kela. It's that dried grape and walnut dessert that hangs and looks like, you, you know, you squeeze it with your hands. Yeah. I'm not into it, guys. I'm sorry. You mean they kind of look like Kublatons? It's very dry. I'm just not into it. Anyways. Um, I would say just I didn't try all the types of kajipuri or just a lot of different Hungarian foods yet. So I, we had to put it pretty high, though. Five and six. Even though, like I said, guys, I'm not saying the cuisines are super dissimilar. Okay, they, guys. They're Eastern. Uh, moving on. Moving on to number six. The number six best European cuisine. In our opinion. In our that we've opinion. Had. That we've had, we've had maybe multiple times, is German and Austrian food. Yeah. Number I mean, six. A, dude, we're talking about a lot of bratwursts, man. Yo. A lot of beers. Now, now, if we were just ranking it on sausage alone, I think they would win. Oh, maybe I don't know not. If that'd be Poland, Actually, bro. Actually, yeah, yeah, we didn't get to Poland. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so Germany, but Germany has its highlights. Yeah. It does. But maybe you have to be from the Midwest I, to appreciate the deliciousness no, no. of the of the Deutschland you, cuisine. You know what I don't like is like if people are like, "Yo, the food is so good, but you have to have it with a beer." And I'm like, "No, no, no, the food should be good without the beer." Right. <laughs> I mean, I think as far as underrated goes, I had German pork knuckle once. At an authentic spot. But most of the time that I've had German pork knuckle, Andrew, interestingly enough, and a lot of people are going to get their mind blown by this, is at Hong Kong cafes. Because Hong Kong cafes, uh, Hong Kong was a very international place, a lot of European influence for the last hundred years, right? So some of the Hong Kong cafes would actually serve uh, duck gawk, like German knuckle. So let me get this right. Your favorite German dish is a dish cooked by Chinese people. Ah! Well, I, had, I had it cooked by Germans I, before, too. It's underrated. Um, underrated from Austria and Germany is the wine. The wine game is actually really good. I think generally when people think about wine, they're thinking about France and, and Italy, but, but, but Austria, they got well, strong wines. They got this Spatzel. The mm. Spatzel is almost like a knocky thing, but it, it, it's more like a pasta made out of some egg. It's pretty good. Uh, what's a little overrated, David, from Germany? Oh, man. See, the, here's the crazy thing. To Is me, this going to be controversial? All right. They got so many different types of sausages over there. Some of them are hit or miss. Right. Because okay. at Worst Kirsch, for example, which is a chain, I believe, from Germany that's international now, not everything is good. No. Like, I had, I don't know, I think I had, like, 10, 15 different sausages. I mean, there. I think they have a snake sausage, so, yeah, it's definitely not going to be good. Um, one thing we did not try, Andrew, is we didn't even try more types of sausages that they only have in Germany, and they have a ton of different cakes that we have just never been exposed to. Controversial opinion. Controversial opinion coming up. All right. The German pretzel. They invented the pretzel, but I like Auntie Anne's. I don't like the huge, thick pretzel that's very firm. It gets cold quickly. It gets super hard. The one that's super shiny. Yeah. Give me the buttery Auntie Anne's. That's my favorite. Wetzel's pretzels. I like that one. I have to conclude that du hast mich. Du hast mich. <laughs> which was a song back in the day. It's called You Hate Me. All right, moving on to the seventh best European cuisine, guys. Don't worry. You might, you might hear your name get called. Is the Irish food. Oh, what kind of accent was that? It's from Ireland. You're, okay. Ireland. Yeah, Here's I got the hook. It's Irish food. Now, here's my thing. I actually, Irish food to me is like a comfort food. It's it is. Very, it's, it is. It's, and that's where, you know, in the same way that French is considered, I mean, I, I think French would say that they're strong all across the board, but a lot of people would say French are mostly strong in the high end. Mm -hmm. People would say that Irish is strong in the low end, but m may not be as strong in the high end. Guys, I don't know who you're going to credit the corned beef to. I heard that it's from British or from, it's generally from UK. You know how like Ireland yeah, and UK. Yeah, it's because it's to take everything from us. That's why. <laughs> that's Scottish. Yeah, I, I yeah. mixed it up. Well, uh, I love corned beef. I have, a, I have a very strong affinity for corned beef. And you know I do because I do order it when I can. No, is it because we got exposed to authentic Irish food quite young? Because we had a really close family friend who was half Irish and half Chinese. Yeah. But and his mom was Irish and she was very close to her like Irish heritage. Yeah, yeah. And so for St. Patrick's Day, we had Irish dinners, guys. And it was potatoes, it was cabbage, it was corned beef. I know it was very plain. It looks very plain, but actually the food got some soul to yeah, it. And you know what it is too? I would say this about Irish food because a lot of people would be like, oh, it's so plain, it's so plain. But there's nothing bad about it. Yeah. That's the key. Because like we're always looking for the upside, but sometimes the upside is lack of downside. All right, guys. Uh, one overrated dish that is accredited to the Irish 
is uh, scotch eggs. I've had that multiple times at multiple Irish pubs. And it looks cool. It looks great. Look, it looks amazing. It's an egg wrapped in meat. This looks awesome. Like, let's There's try so this. layers, yeah. It's whatever. I'll skip it. Like, I just, I don't need to try it anymore. I've had expensive ones. I'm not into it. Yeah, I don't even like the seal my at Mott 32 that have the quail egg in it. There's yeah. something about, like, a meat in an egg or an egg in a meat. Yeah. It just tastes weird to me. But but what's a, what's an underrated food? Um, I would say Reuben sandwiches. Yeah. I like I said, Rubens are really good. Um, we have not had a lot of their chowders. They uh, use a lot of cream up there. They got a lot of chowders and cream soups. Like we said, Irish food, uh, outside of the bar scene and the bar level of like Irish food, not that plentiful in America. Right. Um, home of Guinness, though, of course. Uh, all right. The eighth best European cuisine, according to the Fung Bros, David, is... Poland... Polish food, yeah. And I think that this one is like, it is hard to find strictly Polish restaurants in America. But there is a lot of Polish immigrants in there America. There is a lot of Polish immigrants, but I, I, and I feel like they just focus on the sausage. They're very I think sausage they're more forward. in the Midwest too, yeah. So I guess, David, German or Polish sausages, which one are you giving it to? I'm going with Polish, man. The okay. kielbasa. Right. That, the kielbasa glizzy, I don't yep. know. It's just no, really good. good. Like the spices and I mean I would say Costco got to get some credit for popularizing the Polish sausage I don't know how authentic it is obviously but it is delicious uh what's an underrated dish that people got to try from I Poland? mean I don't from really know Poland. if it's underrated because I think to like Polish people this is like their top three but like uh pierogies pierogies are really underrated I think by your average American that generally stops at kielbasa's I got pierogies from Poland. You know, yeah, that's funny. I think a lot of like the big Polish immigration wave to America is more represented in like diners. So people eat a lot of blintzes. Blintzes are good, right? But that's kind of mm. a shared dish from the region. It's kind of like the version mm -hmm. of a crepe pancake thing. But then, um, yeah, I, I would definitely say that. I would say overrated, Andrew. This is controversial. Wow. Yes, because we actually disagree on this. Wow. Yes or no, cabbage rolls. And by the way, guys, I actually do like cabbage rolls, but I'm just saying it's hit or miss. And when it misses, I don't. I really, I guess a bad cabbage roll is not my flow. You don't like the cabbage rolls. I don't know why, why I did the Auss Aussie accent. All right, that's fine. That That's not the biggest disagreement. I'll roll with it. Yeah, sure. It's 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 not like always a 10 out of 10. Um, I would say that we haven't had a lot of like carby dumpling things. They have a lot of things, Andrew, in Poland. I was looking at the list that like almost are like a pasta or like a gnocchi, but you can't tell, but they're just frying it up with the meat and it, yeah. it looks good and i want to note guys things like poland like why we have it at number eight even though they have like one of the best sausages in the world it's like because the sausage is really the premier item and we can't name that many other items aside from it you know that's why it's like at number eight and by the way guys we don't know <laughs> we, we might be know. wrong we just know what we know yeah we try to know things but we don't know everything uh number nine andrew we've got uh the United Kingdom. Wow. The place that you, America spawned hey. from and fought a bloody hey. revolution against. It might be number nine on food, but it's probably number one on civilization. <laughs> the Anglos. <laughs> um, all right, listen, guys. Uh, here's the thing about UK. Every time someone comes back from the UK, they always tell me that the best food they had in the UK, and there's like three different friends told me this, the best food that I had in the UK was Indian food. So that's why we can't rank UK that high. But there are some highlights, and I want to give a shout out to them. Um, what do you, what are the what highlights? What do I like? Yeah. I like actually tea time food. I like the finger sandwiches with the crust off. British came up with that. Yeah, they got um, it in Hong Kong too. And, and, and the Japanese do a katsu. I'm pretty sure it was the influences from them. Who knows? Butter and jam on the crumpets or biscuits. I love that. Butter, jam, and biscuits incredible actually right. as a simple dish um and also they hong kong cafe food hong kong cafe food yeah. is cantonese people cooking up british diner food in hong kong because they couldn't afford to eat at like the british british spots now david there's a version of british food that everybody eats nowadays in america that they think is really good but it is actually based off british food which is the sunday roast aka your dig yeah. or your Boston and, market. And I think that that's underrated. These like market driven, like Western foods. I don't even think a lot of people know that they come from England, but Andrew, whether you're talking about the hot bar, uh, specifically the more like traditional items, obviously they have like ethnic foods at the hot bar, but like the hot bar at Whole Foods, 
dig in, like you said, Boston Market being the best example. Well, I don't even know. What do you describe that as? Cornucopia food? It's just I don't like know. a British Sunday I don't know. roast, right? Somebody leave it in the comments down below if you got a better uh, like label also, for it. Also, I tend to think that like old town, old time American food from like the 1930s or 40s probably looked more like British roast than it does okay. today in modern day. Um, I would say overrated, Andrew. This is when it's crazy. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Controversial. Uh, Controversial opinion. I think a fish and chips, man. Wow. Could be a little better than Bro. they are. I mean, they, I'm just saying for a place that like that's... They eat it a lot. So, I mean, you're basing it off of the British fish and chip spots in America. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the Stuff. way, guys, I don't know. No, because I we, haven't been over no, there. But, 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 because the, my favorite fish and chip spot i ever been to in America was run by an Indian guy from London, and he was using swai fish from Vietnam. And we did go to the most authentic British fish and chip spot in New York before, so that's what we're kind of basing it. I, on. I would say Yorkshire pudding looks like something I have. I really want to try, as well as this dish, uh, toads in a hole, mm. and then they also have a, a thing called a spotted dick. Um, you you know what is my overrated dish, and uh, I don't know how controversial this is. It's the British fry, the British fry plate. I'm not too into it because I'm not into the beans or the toasted tomato. You don't like the toasted no, tomato. No, the sausage is fine. The egg is fine. But, you know, the beans and the tomato, I'm not really into. So the British fry is like, you know, not my favorite, you know, breakfast food. Yeah, but I, you know, the interesting thing about uh, like the UK or specifically, I guess, more of the metropolitan cities like London or something, you can find sort of like America cuisines from all around the world. So I think that that's one of the uni unique things is like a lot of immigrants, you know, bringing their own cuisines into the United Kingdom. Number 10, Andrew. We've actually got food from the Netherlands, mm. aka Dutch food. Um, people in Flanders, in the, the Flemish part of Belgium, also speak a version of Dutch, but their food is a little bit different being that they're part of Belgium. Yeah, I mean, I think that they're going to, I guess, generally be known, and I don't want to just clump all Belgian food into that because Belgian food is actually a little bit more French-focused, yeah. so there's, like, the frites and stuff like that. But, yeah, as far as Dutch food, I guess you have stroopwafels. Uh, oh, stroopwafels? I will say this. They live up to the hype. Okay. I don't know why in America they don't eat more Stroop waffles. Delicious. Hands down. Nothing gross about them. Only good things about them. Um, underrated dishes that you need to look for if you can. Flemish beef stew. And actually one of the top rated dishes that is Dutch, if you look on Dutch lists, is mee goreng. Because it comes from Indonesia. Right, because they colonized Indonesia at one they point. They colonized Indonesia. And now it's very popular in the Dutch countries. Right. Overrated-wise... Just not the Stroop waffle. I'm going back. <laughs> I'm standing by the Stroop right. waffle. Some of the other dishes, you know, I haven't had them. I haven't had the exposure, but I'm not dying All right. to try it. All right, guys. I uh, want to try it, though. We're closing off the video with this one. This is the number 11, the last one. That we've had. Does not mean it's bad because yeah. I think, by the way, there's like probably like 30. I mean, literally, in. we're just ranking them so something has to be at the bottom. It doesn't mean it's bad, right? It's just... When you rank stuff, not all of it can be at the top. Um, number 11, our last European cuisine that you should still try and seek out. And you can still find a pretty decent volume of these type of restaurants in America. Is Scandinavian food. What is Scandinavia, uh, Andrew? Because we're just- Denmark, like Norway, Sweden, Finland. Now, guys, we know about Swedish aesthetics. We're talking about Swedish design. We're talking about Ikea, right? We know those things. I think it's high on design. The food- isn't known to be delicious. Now, highlights. The Swedish meatballs, right? We can all agree. You're talking about Ikea. But, but, well, you're, popularized but the, but by Ikea. To your point, the food has been known to be minimalistic, and much like the interior of a Volvo. Mm. A Volvo is a good car, but it is known for having the Scandinavian design mindset when, like, in design, in the interiors, on the instrument uh, panel. Uh, some, some things that you should try and look out for, obviously, is the Swedish meatballs when you can, not just from Ikea, but from actual, like, you know, Scandinavian restaurants. Uh, they have this, like, shrimp salad toast that I think is not bad. It's like a shrimp salad. I mean... Are you talking about... We had it at S'more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, their cinnamon bun is really well known from Sweden. Yeah, some of the... Uh, actually, the Scandinavian versions of French pastries... Yes. They got their own unique thing going on. I noticed ah. they use a lot of cardamom. Yeah, and uh, cured salmon. Cured Be salmon. Now, now, listen, I said cured salmon, not pickled salmon, because the uh, overrated dish is the, the is overrated dish is the pickled herring. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not into yeah, it. Yeah, and maybe possibly 
some of the over, maybe you could view it as over usage of dill and cucumbers. I'm just saying they got a lot. Um, yeah, but you know, we didn't try a lot. If anybody wants to invite us to the Scandinavian countries, <laughs> I'm down to check it out, man. Yeah. I got a lot of, bought so much Ikea furniture. Yeah, who knows? Life. Maybe the list will change uh, after we make an actual trip to Europe. No, guys, I totally acknowledge that this list could change if we actually traveled around Europe. But I do think that this is like a fairly well thought out list in my opinion. Right. I wouldn't be shocked if somebody who knows a lot more than us still is like, okay, it wasn't the, the worst yeah. list I've seen. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about our list. All right, what did we absolutely miss out on? Name some of the dishes that you're like, oh, you guys got to get this. Or, hey, I totally disagree with your controversial take on this. Let me know in the comments down below. It's fine. We'll have a little food talk in the comments. Um, but this is obviously our thoughts. And this is based off the food that we seeked out. Yeah, we tried. and you know what it is? After making this list, Andrew, I think this encourages me to even explore more European food at least within, you know, whatever I can find in America. Wow. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We are the Hot Pop Boys. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.